So the last time we left off with this Mac Mini mid-2011, we actually booted it to Mac OS Sequoia, upgrading all the way from High Sierra. And while High Sierra ran decently on this device, Sequoia uh, definitely needs a second to load some stuff. Just take a look at how long it's going to take to log into this. 32 seconds to reach the desktop, and that's with an SSD installed inside this thing. But that's only Mac OS on this machine. Intel Macs can actually run really just any x86 operating system, so why don't we try out Boot Camp with Windows 11 first? Creating a partition on your disk for Windows. Oh, this is dual boot. Yeah, I don't want to dual boot. Let's just nuke Sequoia. Now we're just going to throw our Windows 11 LTSC ISO USB on this thing. That's a mouthful. And now we got to hold down the option key. Because the screen is black, it looks like we're inside like the open core boot thing, but I guess it shouldn't matter because we're just going to wipe this entire drive anyways. All right, Mac Mini, are you prepared to be made worse? Is it going to actually boot into the installer? After waiting a bit, here we are, Windows 11 setup. Uh, I'm so sorry. Me being cynical aside, uh, what is this new installer? I, I really don't like it. Can we maybe like go back or something? Oh yeah, there we go. This is what I'm used to. It's kind of funny that the installer still has like the Windows 8 kind of purple in the background. Uh oh, looks like we gotta activate Windows. It'd be a huge shame if I had a PowerShell script that could do that. And we want IoT Enterprise. Click here and let's see what partitions we got. Uh, yeah, you know what? I don't care. Let's just nuke everything. Why not? And now our drive's completely free. So let's install Windows 11. Oh, by the way, quick side tangent, if you're wondering how I created that bootable installer, I use this website, massgrave.dev, and I use the Rufus ISO flasher. Rufus actually lets you remove all the arbitrary restrictions Windows 11 has, so you can use it on older computers like this. Uh-oh, even the Windows logo is lagging. Oh no, dude, not this. Oh, never mind. Uh, thanks to the way we flash this ISO, we can just bypass this. Now add security questions. What was your pet's first name? Oh, okay. Sounds about right. And now we just gotta wait a sec. While the setup was finishing, I found the drivers that we need to connect the thing online, so let's download those and install them. Got the bootcamp files on our system, so all we gotta do is just run the setup right here. Let's wait for all the drivers to install and hopefully we can get online then. I stepped away from the computer for a bit and I come back and I see automatic repair. Uh oh, what's up? Did bootcamp destroy my Windows 11 install? I hope not. Uh oh, it, it might have. Why is it stuck right there? Screen's black. Did we seriously install a bad display driver? Maybe this external monitor is the problem. You can, uh, you can kind of see why I wanted to use the smaller external one, huh? Yeah, same exact issue on this display too, so it's gotta be the driver's fault. Let's reinstall Windows. Woo! The Mac Mini came out back in a time where UEFI wasn't standard yet, so the drivers for this thing are made to only work on BIOS. So when we install Windows to the EFI or UEFI mode, it just, it stops working. So to fix that, I reinstalled Windows 11 and we're gonna convert the drive from GPT to MBR and hopefully then the driver is gonna work. So what we're gonna do is rush to the desktop and then we're gonna install like this sketchy partition manager and then convert the entire disk to MBR and hopefully then the drivers won't just destroy the device. Hope this one lets me do it for free. Disk Genius by Quinn Hyung Dao. I'm not reading that. There is way too much going on inside this program and I'm a big fan of it. All right, right click here and convert to MBR. GPT may become unbootable. If that happens, we could just boot into Windows Recovery and fix it from there. Looks like it is done. All right, let's reboot. Ooh, okay. Yeah, that's what I expected. All right. Now we're going to boot from the Windows installation media. Let's hit up command prompt. Disk part list disk. There you go, disk zero. Select disk zero list partition. Yeah, and this is the big partition we need. Select partition three, and then we'll set that as the active one. And now we gotta write the BIOS bootloader to that partition. Let's assign the letter C. And now we're gonna use boot rec to fix the MBR. Surprisingly, we can just change our directory by typing in the directory name here. And now boot rec slash fix M. BR. The operation completed successfully. And now we just gotta write the boot configuration data. Let's boot into Windows and see if that worked. Oh, okay, an accessible boot device. We've got some more work to do. Maybe we have to point the bootloader to the correct partition. All right, so now we're forcing BCD to point to the C directory with these commands. And after forcing the thing into safe mode, finally, we have something working. Now we just disable safe mode and we may be out of the woods. Please. What? What? All right, uh, I'm just, I'm kind of at a loss for words. What now? All right, maybe we'll enter safe mode again and then run all those stupid BCD edit commands from inside safe mode. Oh, don't worry. I tried to install it with an MBR installer, but <laughs> this Mac mini, it only reads MBR installers from a CD drive, which I, I don't have. Complete pain in the ass. And this boot set command, I have a feeling this is gonna work because it updated literally every single volume here with boot manager. All right, let's see if it works now. 
All right, this is usually what happens with safe mode. Ooh, okay, looking good. Wait, is this safe mode or are the drivers just messed up? Holy shit, we did it. We converted GPT to MBR. Now all we have to do is install the drivers, which I really, really hope they don't break the system after all this work I just put into it. So I ran the setup right here inside Intel, didn't work, and also I checked the display adapter right here with update display adapter browse in the uh the boot camp directory and nothing so i guess we're just forced to run the setup that may or may not destroy our computer uh oh we're on the intel section here we go oh no i can't watch holy shit it's working i have been filming since 2 a.m it is 11:51 right now <laughs> but finally after all that work we have a usable mac mini on windows 11. you must restart your s oh no please please don't i'm so happy right now oh and i just realized whenever i turn on the mac mini it defaults to the old partition that doesn't really exist anymore so any number of times me going back and forth trying to fix it it could have already been fixed i just forgot to hold down option and pick the right one see i also reset the nvram on this thing in the middle of my troubleshooting so that might be why but yeah you see how efi boots the normal we want this one but after the restart still works all right uh let's play with windows oh what 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 the hell why is this here just okay oh no oh, what the f is this come on let's speed run the login to see if i can get to safe mode before it crashes oh okay oh you know what? choose other options yeah right here use repair tools troubleshoot startup settings and yeah give me safe mode and according to gemini this is the problem right here so we just rename it to dot sys dot back and hopefully that's it i mean it's kind of stupid to blindly trust ai but not all it's gonna waste is my time and was that it any sketchy system 32 files launching huh i let it sit for a minute no crashes so i think we're out of the woods we can finally use windows 11 on this pc it should not be running on now i'm connected to the network but let's see if we can actually communicate ping google.com and yup, internet's working. Now it's time to do something we couldn't do on Mac OS. Game on this thing. I love Microsoft Edging. This is the one functionality I miss when I'm using my MacBook. I mean, the CPU inside this thing is an i5 second generation, so my expectations for the performance isn't too high, but at least we can play the games on like Mac OS. So for the games we're gonna test, let's try out Counter-Strike Source, TF2, and Counter-Strike 2, which we uh, we might have to wait to install this one because I don't think we'll have enough storage. Let's also try out Fortnite on this thing because why not? Aside from that, we're kind of taxing the CPU by installing a game, installing an app, having a web page open, and the system is actually still keeping up. I'm sure the upgraded 8 gigs of DDR3 instead of 4 gigs of DDR3 and the SSD are to thank for that though. Speaking of system performance, I find it extremely funny how Steam is downloading a game in the background and this is how the client performs in Epic Games. It just launched, okay? I'm not even logged in and just take a look at how this performs. <laughs> Whoa. So we got our first two games installed. Let's start off with uh, TF2, but first, uh, let's just kill Epic Games Launcher. I don't need that taking up a bunch of resources. Fun fact, this game actually came out on Mac OS back in the early 2010s, but due to the system updates like killing 32-bit support, you just can't play it anymore. Oh, you know what I just realized? Is the, uh, is the sound working on this? The audio on the Mac Mini itself is working, and we also have audio on the external display. I'll just use the external display. One of my favorite things about PC gaming compared to console gaming is just being able to customize every single setting to force the game to work on your computer. I think this computer is a bit underpowered to play TF2 at 1080p native, so we're just going to run it at 720p. We're also going to tick all the settings to the lowest possible. Let's also cap the FPS because this screen really can't output anything past 60. So TF2 on this computer is, uh, it's not the best experience. We're like at 20 frames, mid 30s. It's, it's not very stable either. easy. Now, I'm the kind of person who'd rather sacrifice graphics instead of frame rate, so let's reduce the resolution even more. 800 by 600 isn't that much better, to tell you the truth. It dips around 30 instead of the low 20s this time. I think if you cap this game at 45 frames, it'll be a much better experience, but we've already spent way too much time on this one. Now, let's try out a game that's probably way more fitting for this hardware. This game actually predates Half-Life 2, so I think it's a bit more fair to run the game at medium settings here. I think I overestimated the capabilities of this Mac. It starts to stutter every single time I shoot, and the frames are just all over the place. All right, fine, you win. I'll run you at 720p with all low settings. Holy stutter, man. After reducing everything to the bare minimum and the resolution to 720p, the game, uh, it doesn't perform that much better. I mean, we're hitting like 60 frames in low intensity areas, but when you start to actually get into a fight, stutters happen and your frames drop like by half. Where is he? What the? 
What? <laughs> but just like all the Counter-Strike pros, let's make your game look like absolute shit. 640 by 480. Everything is super pixelated and I could barely read the chat, but at least the game is actually running really well. Stable 60 frames. And honestly, playing old games at this resolution, it's not terrible, I gotta say. I could play this for a while. All right, so next up, we're going to try out Counter-Strike 2. I, I don't even think this is going to launch. It just finished installing, and oh, we got to activate Windows. That was easy. Now we can play our game without a hideous watermark over it. Oh, it won't even launch on this thing. The app requires DirectX 11, and apparently this GPU or uh, iGPU doesn't support it. Maybe we can try Vulcan instead? Oh, okay, same error. It would be really nice if I could just play the better version of this game on official matchmaking, but oh well. We'll take a break from the games for a second, try out some YouTube on this thing, and then we'll play Fortnite. Okay, honestly, searching the web, the performance could be worse. Let's play uh, this video right here. And the video defaults to 720p and plays without an issue. Uh, what if we push this thing up to, I guess, say 1440p? And it's actually still keeping up with 1440p. The performance is really impressing me, actually. All right, let's just push it to 4K then. Yeah, here's the problem. It's starting to stutter, it's buffering, we're dropping frames, but honestly, it's still really impressive that a 2011 Mac Mini can handle 1440p streaming in 2026. Okay, let's see if we can even boot Fortnite. I think it's pretty obvious that Epic Games doesn't care about low-end systems because, I mean, just take a look at how long it takes for this to pop up. And especially compared to how fast Windows 11 natively is. It's just embarrassing. Oh, and the cherry on top is that we need 102 gigs. Wait, can we just customize the Fortnite install? Yeah, why, why is high-res textures checked? After way too much time waiting, Fortnite is finally installed, so let's take a look at it. It says Fortnite is running, but do you really want to use that terminology? How about walking? <laughs> There's no way the game actually boots. Same error as Counter-Strike 2, a DirectX 11 compatible GPU is needed to run the engine. So that's the Mac Mini 2011 running Windows 11. It's It was just a complete pain in the ass to get this working. And the entire troubleshooting process was just one fix after another fix, and eventually something worked and now we have this working. I would be frustrated, but honestly, I learned something from this experience, the difference between MBR and GPT. And now I know the process to put Windows 11 on Macs from this era with this weird, uh, like, EFI quirk. I was actually planning to install, like, Android and, like, Linux and all the other operating systems in this video, but Windows just took up way too much of my time, so that's gonna have to, like, be a part two or a separate video. Anyways, thanks for watching, and let me know down in the comments, uh, what other tech projects do you want me to take a look at? Please... Please nothing involving Windows for at least a week. I'm just kind of burnt out on this operating system. All right, I'll see you later.